It's the battle for Congressional District 27. State Senator Annette Tadeo hopes to unseat Republican incumbent Representative Maria Elvira Salazar. I went one on one with both candidates to talk about their priorities. Here's what they had to say. Congresswoman Salazar, thank you so much for joining My us. My pleasure on to be here. First of all, congratulations are in order. You received the Republican nomination for District 27, and you just recently got married. Well, yes, I got married to a farmer from Lower Alabama. And uh, I'm very proud because he is just like me, the epitome of the American dream. He is, he proves that the American dream is still alive. And not only that, that in one generation, you can grow from the dirt where he came from to a uh, very high, being a very high and prominent entrepreneur, only in America. So thank you. You also received the nomination. You already know officially who your opponent will be. Right. Some are billing it as two Latinas battling it out for District 27. So what would you say are some of the main differences between you and Aneta Deo? Well, I would say that the main difference is that uh, I feel very sorry for Tadeo because she would have to defend what's undefendable which is uh, the Biden administration. The Democrats in 18 months have destroyed the economy in this country. So uh, she would have to explain why inflation, the, it's not only inflation, is the unaffordability. One out of four American families, when they go to the supermarket, they cannot finish their grocery list because they don't have enough money. One out of two that goes to the gas pump cannot fill the tank because they do not have enough money. And unfortunately, the Democratic Party, and she is the Democratic Party, so she will have to be a proxy of Nancy Pelosi because Nancy doesn't give you any chance of voting any other way but with her. Let me ask you something, because you've been two years in office now. You're running now as the incumbent. A lot of difference from last time. Yeah. Uh, Tadeo says that you have been ineffective in your role in the past two years and that the, your bills have not turned into laws. How do you respond to that? Well, I think that Tadeo is a little bit misinformed because what's very ironic is that herself was asking her president, the Biden or, or the Democratic president, I should say, because Biden is everyone's president, but the Democratic president to enforce a law by the name of Renacer to re to renacer to re be to be born again and that law was created by salazar and it passed a democrat uh, rep uh house of representatives so if she checks she is pushing the president to put into effect a law that i created but besides that uh, you have the COVID relief that I was able to convince Nidia uh, Velasquez, who is the chairman of the Small Business Committee, to pass a law with me, I was one of the co-sponsors, to relief uh, small businesses from having to pay uh, the loans, the EIDL loans that they took up last year. So I think Tadeo is pretty misinformed. Let's talk about inflation. Miami has become one of the most expensive cities in the country. Uh, residents here are having a hard time. What are you doing in Congress to help everyday Americans be able to live? Listen, uh, if the voters decide to put us back into, into office or give us the majority, what we're going to do is stop the bleed. How do you do that? How you stop the bleed is that you stop passing any other law that gives free money. The Democrats in the last 19 months, and I have been there, have passed five laws giving money away in a time when what you need to do is you need to, to stop the, the spending. We're talking about $1.9 trillion for COVID, another uh, $1.2 for infrastructure. I'm not saying that there are merits in those needs. We do need to fix the infrastructure, but this is not the time to do this. We, we had three years ago, we had the best economic scenario that you could have had in the history of this, of this country. Uh, but elections have consequences. Would you not blame any of this on COVID? Oh, I would, no, I, not at all, because in, uh, in January of 2021, when we swore in, the first bill that was put on the floor was $1.9 trillion. The Trump administration had spent already around three or four trillion during the Trump time to do away and to help and redress some of the COVID consequences, but enough. You are running in a district 
that has really gone back and forth from yeah. Democrats to Republicans to Democrats. Why do you think that it should stay Republican and they should vote once again for Maria Elvira Salazar? Oh, well, because I'm not a socialist because I am pro-American and I vote whatever is good for my district, whether it's the environmental. You know, I have one of the biggest endorsements of one of the most important environmentalist groups in this country. Why? Because I know that we have a very long coastline and we got to protect it because if we don't have pretty beaches and pretty sand, the tourists don't come. And that will affect those, the coladito, the little shops that live off tourism. So I, 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 I know what my district needs and I do know that those Hispanic Americans, my district is 70% Hispanic. We know whether you're in Nicaraguan or Guatemalan or Venezuelan or Cuban or Dominican, we do know that socialism doesn't work. I want to talk about one of the endorsements that you have received as well, the National Police Association. But having said that, you were also one of the few Republicans and maybe the only one here in South Florida that voted with the gun safety bill. Because the it's common sense. We can. I mean, the, the, the law that I voted for is to raise the age between eight, from 18 to 21 if you are a youngster and you want to go buy a semi-automatic weapon. No, if we would have had that law in place, Uvalde and Parkland, we would have been able to avoid. And by the way, my opponent voted against it when it was at the Florida legislature. So, you know, here she, we go with whatever gets, she goes with whatever is convenient. You vote what's good for your people. And I do believe that if you are 18, you don't have any business in buying any semi-automatic weapon. At the same time, I think that we defend the Second Amendment because that's sacred. The Constitution is sacred. Don't touch it. Would you stop there? If they continue with the restrictions and regulations, would you vote for that? Let's see what comes up. But I'm always open to protect the Second Amendment right. Because remember, we the Cubans and the, my parents and the Venezuelans, we know that the Constitution guarantees is that you're going to have weapons or arms to defend yourself against the government. On the search at Mar-a-Lago. Yes. There have been reports that indicate that perhaps there were some um, documents that were seized that had some nuclear information on other countries. You have compared what happened at Mar-a-Lago to Cuba and Nicaragua. Do you still stand by that? The DOJ needs to prove to all of us that what they did was justified. Period. Because the Constitution has very clear guidelines as to how, how do you proceed when you are going to raid a private home of a private citizen. Having said that, I do believe that it was, it was um, an exaggeration that what they were looking for were papers, that there is the uh, judicial process or through the courts, subpoenas, um, uh, lawsuits in order to acquire those papers. I do believe that this type of raids you do when you're looking for arms or hostages or drugs. Uh, so I don't want to see the so DOJ. So classified information? Well, be well you know, that the National Archives was the one who guided the FBI to do the raid. I think that they could have continued the conversation that we're having with the president's attorneys to acquire those documents. What are they looking for? I still do not know. What did they find? We still do not know. I do believe that there is another incident with another political, um, uh, another presidential contender who also, the FBI claimed that she kept classified information and they never did that to her. On the issue of abortion. Yes. This perhaps may be one of the issues that could decide this midterm election. Do you believe that the Supreme Court of the United States made the right decision? I think the Supreme Court did the right decision. You send that abortion decision or, or you send the abortion laws back to the states and have the states decide through their state legislatures. Then you'll have a California and a New York where they consider that late-term abortion is correct. Then you have another Florida that may consider that that's not the way to go. Good luck to you in Thank November. You. And Don't once I again, need it. <laughs> and congratulations once again Thank on you. your marriage. And wonderful to see you.